SQL Transformations is a simple way to run powerful transformations on large volumes of data within your recipes. So let's take a look to see how it works. We are building an automation to run a daily load of leads from a legacy CRM system to a cloud CRM application, which is Salesforce. In each load, there are over 5 million records in the legacy CRM application, but we want to remove duplicates from being created and we also want to filter for high quality leads by scrubbing out emails that contain personal domains. We'll do this in three steps using SQL transformations. First, we'll extract the data from our data sources. Next, we'll transform the data using SQL. And finally, we will load the transformed data over to be imported in bulk into Salesforce. So let's take a look at how we can do this in a recipe. So in the recipe here, we have the trigger, which extracts all the legacy CRM leads from an on-prem file server. And we have an action that uses Salesforce bulk APIs to load those millions of records. But before we load the leads to Salesforce, we'll need to transform the data. We'll run the transformation by using SQL. And to do this, we'll use SQL transformations. We'll search for SQL in the app search step and select SQL transformations. Now this brings us to the first step defining our data sources. So here in the setup, we can define multiple data sources. To start off, we'll need to define the data sets on which we will run the transformation on. So let's start by adding the first data source, which is the legacy CRM system leads, and we'll give it a name, legacy CRM leads, to reference it in the query. And since the data is coming from the on-prem server as a CSV content stream, for the data source type, we'll select CSV content stream. Now, just like parsing through a CSV, we need to specify the file contents and data schema. We can easily map the file contents from the trigger over to the action. And it's important to define the schema since it is how we reference the column structure in the data source. So we'll pull in a sample file with the same column structure to generate the schema. And before I generate the schema, I can preview the data to make sure it's correct. Next, my second data source, which I have already set up here, is the Cloud CRM Leads, which is basically an extract from the Cloud CRM application. And for easier access, I've already stored it as a file in file storage. Because of the direct integration between file storage and SQL transformations, I can simply specify the path over here, and the SQL transformations action can directly fetch the data to be used in the query. And similar to the first source, we're also defining the schema here. And the third source is a personal email lookup file also stored within file storage. And it contains all the non-corporate email domains to filter out from our incoming lead extract. And just like that, we were able to really quickly set up the three data sources. So now we'll move on to the second step to create the SQL query that will apply the transformations to give us the final result set. Below we have the SQL query field, and it's a select statement that runs directly on the connected data sources. We don't have to load it into any database, create special tables, or any other similar steps. We're able to read data from three disparate sources and can apply any kind of query syntax supported in ANSI SQL. It supports queries and subqueries, complex joins, where, and group by functions for aggregation, concat, trim, regular expression match for standardization, and so on. It supports all operations supported in standard SQL. Now, with the query entered, we'll move on to the final step, loading the SQL transformations output into Salesforce. We'll specify the output type to retrieve the new dataset from the SQL transformation. We'll set CSV content stream, since the data will move directly into Salesforce, but we could store the new file in file storage just as well for easier access in the future. Now, when we move over to the Salesforce action, we have the CSV contents from the SQL transformation available to use, and we can simply drag the file into Salesforce to be bulk imported to create high quality and deduplicated leads. So let's run this automation. And just to reiterate, as this recipe runs, SQL Transformations is reading millions of rows of data from the on-prem file server 
performing a SQL query against multiple data sources and producing a new transformed CSV as an output, all within a single action. So if you look at our job history, this is what the query looks like. It dynamically uses the right values from the right data source. And in the output, we can see just how many rows were produced, over 3.9 or just about 4 million records. This is the output that the transformation created and loaded into Salesforce. The total time for this whole automation to process, transform, and upload several millions of rows is approximately 56 minutes, but it's important to note that the transformation itself only took one minute. The majority of the time was spent loading the data into Salesforce. Using SQL transformations, we have sped up this process 100x had this same data set been processed in batches or row by row. And this is just one example of how you can use SQL transformations over a large volume of data. That's a quick introduction into SQL transformations and how it can be used in combination with Workato file storage. For more information, you can visit our docs at docs.workato.com.